walls of Jericho, la de Jericho around your life autour de ta vie, around your ministry autour de ta ministère, are falling now God wants to give you glory. Alors Dieu peut te donner la gloire. But the key to the glory, mais la clé à la gloire, is we stop. Acts chapter 9, beginning from verse 10. It says, and there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight. And inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. Amen. <clears throat> now we are looking at assignments, okay? Referring to that which God has given to you to do something, a project, a work, a task that God has assigned to your life. That God says you must accomplish this in your lifetime. You are the one that must do this or these are the tasks that you must do. Amen. Amen. And um, so, here was Paul, um, called Saul by then, and he had done a good job. On one side of the spectrum, on one end, he had been used by God to push the church into the assignment by persecution. And then... Um, he had been used by God to force the church to go out of Jerusalem. He was one of those used by God. Amen? To persecute the church. But now he had an assignment on the other side of the spectrum. That is the same church that he had persecuted. He was now called to be one of those, okay, who are the front line workers of the same church. And then he also would now suffer his own portion of persecution. Amen? Now, but Saul is not the one I want to focus on briefly in this passage as we look on, but I want us to look at Ananias. Ananias <clears throat> was another believer another disciple that is someone who had been following someone who had allowed himself to be trained Ananias was just a common believer I don't know why for some reason I don't have an indication but usually in my mind I just have it that Ananias was like kind of an you know older person, all right? I, I, I don't have a basis for it. I, I don't know. However, the main point was that he was just a disciple, another ordinary person, as we would call them in the church. But then for God, no one is just another ordinary person in the church. 
everyone in the church of God is a special person with a particular job for you to do. Amen. So, you must understand that there are specific jobs that God has for different people to do and then there are general jobs, specific assignments and general assignments. And there are the things that God expects us to be doing on a daily basis that you don't need to wake up with a revelation from God on what to do. Um, a bishop that I respect they were asking um, an old time preacher. When I say old time, these are, the, these are the revivalists that began the New Testament move, of, or rather the move of our age, the pouring of the Holy Spirit. They are the first that began to go, do out, you know, I mean, prayer line and pray for people and the minister. And he was asking this minister, uh, how do you know what to preach? And this minister, a Holy Ghost man of God, you know, received the question. And this young bishop, by the way, was not a bishop, but he was expecting some kind of revelation of how this man receives, you know, how he goes into his closet and then God shows him this. Because the ministration in the man's life was awesome. The miracles were awesome. Okay? So this young minister now believed there was a special way he received some God. So when he asked the older minister, he said, so how do you know what you are supposed to minister? How do you know? The man told me, he said, don't be spooky. That was the answer. Don't be spooky. Don't try to let this thing look as though you are there and every moment God is speaking to you and you are having this revelation from God every single time. Yes, the Holy Spirit will speak to us, but there are general things that God requires you to do every day. You don't need a witness. You don't need the Holy Ghost to give you a special word to tell someone about Jesus Christ. You don't need the Holy Spirit to give you a special revelation on some things that you are supposed to do. These are things that are laid down. Some may even want to use the word mundane things, things that you repeat, things that are regular. Okay? Things that go on every day. But really, it is those regular things that actually keep you, sustain you, and build you up. It is not the special things all the time. It is the regular things that prove your Christianity. It's a normal Christian living. The normal obedience. <clears throat> the normal response to God that produces the, 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 the Christian that God can use for a special assignment. Here was Ananias, and the Bible calls him a disciple, a disciplined follower of Christ. One that was used to obeying God in the normal things that you call normal. Having his devotion every day. Having his prayer time every day. There are many Christians that have this idea that God will use them to do some big things. But yet still, your daily prayer time, you don't have it. Your daily fellowship with God is absent. I found out that so long as I have my quiet time, I will never be without a message. So long as I read my Bible every day, so long as I give time to God, I will never be without a message. By the time I read one chapter, I now have to zero in on what I'm supposed to minister and be disciplined on what I'm supposed to do. Because in the one chapter, God will bring out so many things. God will open so many things. You, you, you must not try to become a strong major Christian by waiting for some special, specific revelation from the Lord. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. When that one comes, it will come. When, when that one comes, that God will take you in the Lord's day and carry you in the spirit and show you and carry you into a valley full of dry bones, it will come. Are you standing me somebody? But when you, in fact, when you make it a daily habit to seek God, God, open your word to me. God, reveal to me. God, show me what you want. 
It is in those daily prayers that you find God will begin to reveal to you things you need to know, take you deep into God, take you into experiences, open your eyes and show you things and give you uncommon specific assignments. And Ananias was a disciple. After this account of Ananias, I don't think I remember where else he surfaced. By the way, you just realize is that because somebody messed up that has your name, does not mean to you would mess up. If there was any akin tell before me that failed God, it is not this one. Oh, I'm not hearing you, somebody. <laughs> Hello, his influence will not be upon my name. Oh, I'm not hearing you, somebody. Before I came, maybe the name would have been this. So if there was another Sam Jolly before me or Jolly's before me that messed up, now that I now carry Jolly, I have changed. I have changed the image of Jolly's. No, if you go to the village where my name comes from, it was only sometime last year or so, I discovered that they found two old men who carry my name. I don't mean, and just because before then, I know that all the almost all the jollies had been wiped out before 60. The first time they found two people who still had my name. You understand? Are you understand me, somebody? So, in, in, in that place, they now know if you are called Jolie, you are either dying quickly or you are irrelevant to the point that is fa- they found them. You understand, right? So, when once you are called Jolie, you are irrelevant or you die early. That was it. But since I came, it has changed. I am called Sam Jolie, and I am not irrelevant. And I am not dying early. And I am not dying before my time. Oh, you are not understanding me, somebody. By the way, whatever name you carry that, that had some negative history to it, I change it now. Lit up and say, I change every negative thing associated with my name, with my background, with my family. I change it now. By the blood of Jesus Christ, I change it now. Amen. So here was Ananias, a common believer, so called. Although God will tell Peter, don't call anything I have cleansed common. So long as I have cleansed it, you don't call it common, it is supernatural. Is extraordinary. But your being extraordinary comes from you doing just the regular things of life. A disciple. A disciplined follower. One who had given himself to be trained. One that had given himself to go through the discipleship schools. One that gave himself to sit down and listen at the apostles' feet. The things that were being taught. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. And let's look at verse 42. If you found, you can say amen. Let's read. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They continued steadfastly. Someone say continued. Continued. I am not hearing you say continued. Continued. That word is a key word of growth. It's a key word of becoming an extraordinary person. Just to continue. Tell someone, say, just continue. just continue. Continue means keep on doing the things that you are required to do. Keep on doing what is expected of you. Keep on with what has been given to you. Tell someone next, you say, keep on doing what has been given to you. So listen. You become outstanding by continuing. By doing the normal, the regular things that you are supposed to do. The Bible says here, they continue what? Steadfastly in the apostles', apostles doctrine. doctrine. They were not looking for some special revelation. Now, I had the a doctrine means it is a laid down teaching that is repeatedly being taught. It's not something new. It, it's not like I have to come today and produce a new teaching. Some people, they are waiting for a new revelation every day. It is not that that will sustain you. It is me going back to the things that God has given to me, the things upon which the ministry is built, upon which the church is built, I am teaching you the same things that will cause you to become powerful. That will cause you to become mighty in God. That will cause you to become strong in God. Are you understanding me, somebody? Not fighting. I remember when I was young, 
I had one orthodox preacher that was very close to me. Boasting, I never preach a message twice. And some things that you can hear, until God changes you, you also grow up with it. So between us began to preach, I thought I should preach a new message every time. So every time I must produce a new one. My friends, stop being spooky. The Bible has not changed. Since the day the Bible was given, it's the same Bible we are preaching. We are still teaching stewardship. We are still teaching justification. We are still teaching redemption. And lives are being changed. And the church is becoming more powerful. Look at me, somebody. The thing, same things that we are teaching every day, they are going to make you powerful. I am not hearing you, somebody. They are going to make you powerful. So if you realize the Christians that become powerful are the Christians that are regular in church every week, every service, they are there. The same pastor, the same preachers, the same message, they are sitting down every day. They are sitting down every week. They are the ones that become powerful. Those that are jumping everywhere to come and tell you, I went there and the man of God that came to town, he got had this word. Watch their life, they become nothing. They end up doing no good in the house of God. They end up being confusion is causing problems. They continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. And what? And what? And fellowship. And fellowship. And in, and in breaking of bread. Uh-huh. And in prayers. Yes. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. So as they continue doing what they are doing, many signs and wonders are produced. Look at me. As you continue steadfastly, many signs and wonders shall be produced in your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Read verse 46. And they're continuing. Daily with one accord yes. in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did it their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. You see the word continue again. They're continuing daily with one accord in the temple. Doing what? Breaking bread. Not today they break bread, tomorrow they break gari. Next tomorrow they use salt. Next tomorrow they use palm oil. The other tomorrow they use something new. Your sunlight. They say, no, 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 no. They continue the same things. The same breaking of bread. So powerful. Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 18. Verse 47 rather. So, so sorry, sorry, let me just finish this. They were in the temple and then they were breaking bread from house to house. All right? And then they eat, eat the meat with gladness, singleness of heart. Verse 47, what? Praising, Praising God. God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Look at me. When we continue in the things that must be done, God is going to add to the church daily. I said, may we see daily addition to our churches. May we see daily addition to our assemblies. May we see daily, may we be able to record daily growth, daily progress. Are you understanding me, somebody? Hello? Addition, not some coming and some going, but that the ones that are there will remain and then God adds on top of it. Tell somebody, say, I'll remain. Tell someone, say, go and come 10 years, I'll still be a living word of faith. Oh no, tell somebody and say, if you come back in two years, you shall find me now a pastor. Tell somebody, say, I will be consistent until I rise up the ranks. Tell someone, say, give me two years. You shall be shocked what I will be doing. Tell someone, say, give me five years. Sir. Go and come back and you shall see that I have also built an assembly. I've also built a building. Tell somebody, say, give me ten years. Sir. Go and come back. Sir. You shall see the churches that I've planted. Sir. Tell someone, say, just give me time. Sir. Say, I am not going anywhere. Say, I am stable. Say, I am continuing. Say, I am continuing. There's power in continuing. There's power in being consistent. There's power in being a disciple. Hello? Not a roaming specialist. You roam from here to there. It was a disciple that God used. God had a major man. Paul was a major man. But it's amazing that God did not send one of the apostles to go for Paul. He sent a common disciple. He didn't send one of the big guys. He didn't even send one of the seven that were ordained as deacons. Not even one of them. It was an ordinary disciple. From today, may God begin to use to do extraordinary things. Lift up your hand and say, God, use me for the extraordinary. 
Okay, say, say John, 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 John. Now lift up your hands together and say, Father, as we do the normal, use us for the extraordinary. Use us for the spectacular. Look at me, somebody. Forever and ever, it will be recorded that it was Ananias that God went to get Saul. I see you becoming a great figure in the house of God. I see you going out, being sent of God to go where others cannot go and you are going to raise up great people. Oh, I am not hearing somebody. I see you raising up great men, great women of God as a disciple. As a disciple, even before you become any pastor or whatever. Amen. Tell someone next to you, say, I am not seeing myself come on anymore. Oh, come on, say, I don't care how you see me. Tell someone, I, I don't care your perception of me. Say, it will not move me. It will not move me. Say, you can look down on me. It's your business. It will not move me. From this day, I am yielding to supernatural assignments. Supernatural assignments. Look at me. There are people, but there are people among people. Oh, 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 oh. there are people, but there are people among people. May God find you the people among people that I can use. Was he the only apostle, the only disciple there? There were other disciples. But God found someone. He found one among the others that he can use for a specific powerful assignment. From today, may God begin to use you for specific powerful assignments. Ananias, verse 11, and the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold the prayer. You see, we have expected that God, people are waiting for the dark, God will say, Arise, go over to America, and you are going to become a great and mighty man of God. You think that after they arise, that God will say, now it's your turn to take the stadium. God will say, arise. <laughs> go into the street. Uh -uh. Tell somebody, say, arise and go into the street. Look at me, somebody. There are many people you pass on the street that have got a major assignment upon their life. At the time you stand, they look like non-entities. But you, if only you allow God to show you and you get them, you'll be surprised what shall become of that non-entity. You shall be surprised what God is going to do with that life that you consider just ordinary. Tonight, by the way, I've come to tell you that the person who witnessed to you did not know what they were doing. It's not everybody that had like Ananias had. They just witnessed to you. And you're here. But you are not common. You are not ordinary. From today, I break that thing upon your eyes. That, that, that demonic thing covering your eyes. That thing causing you not to see what God is causing you to see. God wants to see. I command those evil scales to fall from your eyes. That you see what you must say. And God says, go inquire. Ah, ah. Okay, is it a family? Okay, it's not a big crowd. So it must be a family. God says, no. Go for one. Someone say for one. I am not hearing you now. That's what, let's see it again. Say, inquire in the house of Judas. And by the way, let me tell you again, this is not the Judas that betrayed Christ. Are, are you getting this, somebody? Hello? So if somebody who has your name had done evil before, you are different. You shall be used to do great things for God. You are, I'm not hearing you, somebody. I don't know who had your name and did evil. They must not use it to label you. Go to the house of Judas and ask for one. I pray that from today, you'd value everyone's soul. Yeah. Tell someone, say, a soul is a soul. A soul is important. Amen. Don't look down on any one person. Don't look down on any one person. Just that one person that God lays on your heart. You'll be surprised that that person is a key to a major area. Just one woman. Just one woman went and brought together the men of a city, Samaria. One woman who was a known prostitute or a known whatever kind of woman. 
And God said, even the one you have now is not your husband. That means the rest of the five before that one was not her husband. They are men whom she had captured. And Christ saw something in that one woman. He made an appointment with that one woman. It was to that one woman that Christ entered into Samaria. How did I go to Norway and do administration in Norway twice and conference in Norway? It was just yeah, I was just new to Facebook and I, I didn't like Facebook. No, no. And then I just saw somebody and said, hey, this brother, I wonder what is going on with his life. This name, this name. Ah, I can't say, brother, where are you? What's happened to your life? Just one person, one hello. And next thing, I was in Norway. And I was missing to pastors. And missing just one brother that they said to check on him. How are you doing? That was the connection. That was the key. That was the open door. Just one person. From today, don't despise any one person. Because as we talk about apostolic assignments, you might be now thinking of some major call to go to Russia, to go to India. It will come, but begin with one person. And then God told him what to do. And God told him that he has seen verse 12. God told him the vision that he had shown to Saul. That somebody came and laid hands on him. Listen, by being an ordinary disciple, now God began to do a, a, an extraordinary spiritual work that somebody was now dreaming of him in a vision coming to lay hands. An ordinary believer, an ordinary disciple, somebody was dreaming him. One day we were in Guinea for one encounter. A Muslim woman was passing on the streets and she saw post, my poster and she ran to the place. Where is he? Where is he? They said, what? She said, I saw him. I saw him. So I said, that's him. That's him. So what happened? He came to me in my dream. He, he was the one talking to me in my dream. Where is he? That's how she came to church and got born again. Before, whatever I had to say, she was ready to receive it. Because she had seen me in a dream. She saw me. I was in Sierra Leone. May God begin to cause you to take up some mega assignments yeah. that begins with some simple things where God will show you to others in their dream. I am not hearing somebody. Yeah. And that's happened more than once. Where people dream me. People have been delivered. They saw me. And I said, please, let me tell you something. At that time of the night, I'm sure I was sleeping. I, I was not even praying that you say maybe you know and God translated me and I came in the spirit and appeared and I said no I was I've been sleeping God just decided look at me somebody whatever the devil does he's copying is may God begin may you become so relevant to God that God will use you in a dream to show somebody oh, I'm not hearing you somebody there are people who have dreams of how I've showed them the answer Hallelujah. By the way, God is interesting. God is more interesting than what you think. Uh, can somebody ask the Vivian for that thing that Pastor Charles brought? There is a kind of um, design, you know, a souvenir that Reverend Charles Lewis made in Gambia and brought it. Okay? It's a nice thing. They are smiling. Have you seen it, Pastor Lewis? Okay. And you know what? It's interesting. You open it. It looks like when you open it, to close it now, it becomes a tough job. And mommy was so fascinated by it. it was, she liked it so much that I was sleeping. She went in and she woke me up. And she was there struggling. This, it, it closes like this. She spent a long time like this. It's so simple. But it's so sticky. And then, and then eventually she got it. You know what happened? I slept off. And in the dream, I dreamt how to close it easily. Yes. I woke up and said, Mommy, be nothing. 
I said, open it, open it. I said, let me show to close it easily. She was looking at me and I said, like this. She, she said, no, I said, just relax. And I don't two. I closed it. I said, look at it. That's what happened. I said, God, God, in my dream, God showed me. <laughs> it, it is, look at me. The things that God can do. May God begin to reveal things to you. Oh, I'm not hearing you, somebody. Ah, Jesus. The wisdom of God is a mystery. La sagesse de Dieu est the wisdom of God La sagesse de Dieu is not easily understandable. Ne pas facilement comprendre. It's not easily understood. Ne pas facilement compris. Yeah.